Hey everyone, welcome to the Captain Drone YouTube channel. My name is Steve and this would be the brand new Beta FPV Pavo 20 Pro. And check this out, lights on, lights off, lights on, lights off. I could sit here like a little child playing with this all day long. All right, I've powered it off so I can tell you a little bit about the Pavo 20 Pro. First thing you need to know, this is very important, pay attention to my lips. The DJI 04 Pro camera you see here in this quad does not come with it. It is designed as a kit. You must own the DJI 04 Pro camera and then you place it in here. Why does Beta FPV do that? That's because if you buy this entire kit, it's about $100 US. And if you buy the DJI 04 Pro camera system, it's about $220 US. So when you put that together, it's about $320 US. You could never buy a quad this beautiful, this magnificent for $320 US. So by you doing the labor of installing everything, you save yourself some money so what that means is in this kit you get the frame the plastic part the carbon fiber part you get the brushless motors you get the flight controller you get the receiver and trust me when i say it is super simple to put the dji 04 pro camera system in this if you don't believe me check out this video all you have to do is lay out all the parts and you'll see the camera fits nicely in the frame and then you put the main components in the frame as well you put everything together snap all the cables in and guess what you have a quad ready to go and not only that this entire thing is under 250 grams and that's with the battery so the battery I ran it on in this review is a 3s 450 milliamp hour lipo battery and if you use that very tiny 450 milliamp hour lipo battery you will get four minutes of flight time however they recommend not to use that battery because it's too small, but I didn't have anything bigger. They recommend a 650 milliamp hour LiPo battery and you will get six minutes of flight time if you use that battery. So now you're wondering, how does this fly? Well, I've flown this many times outdoors as well as indoors, and I'll say it's a really, really, really good drone. All the Beta FPV Pavo drones are phenomenal. Anybody who owns one right now, post a comment below and tell everybody else how phenomenal they are. So I took this drone out and I flew flew it in an area I was not familiar with and I crashed it many times and it survived it quite well. As a matter of fact, let me show you that flight footage, watch that, then come back to me, I'll tell you some more specs, then I'll show you another outdoor flight footage, but here we go. So I just drove my wife to the airport and on the way back I happened to stop at Hogsback Falls. I don't know if you can see them way back there. And I'm at an area I'm not 100% familiar with but I'm gonna fly our little beta FPV quad around here and uh, hopefully I don't lose it in the water or in a tree. Here we go. All right, it is digital, so I am gonna fly with the DJI Goggles 3 and I have the ELRS version, so I am gonna use the Radio Master Pocket ELRS to fly this baby. All right, let's put a landing pad out here. I don't think I'm gonna get too much flight time because it is really cold out and I have a small battery, but uh, here we go. Oh, light's on, but the light should go off. So we have light on for the brightness to fly out here. Oh, look at that, it lightens up my face. And uh, light off, but uh, I'm gonna fly with light off so we get more flight time. No gloves, because I can't fly with gloves on, and I'm in the shade, so it's pretty darn cold. All right, here we go. I'll try to take it slow so I don't hit the trees or anything. Bring it around. Like I say, I'm not really used to this area, so I've gotta get you, here, let's go way up. <gasps> I gotta get used to it. It flies extremely fast. And uh, let me just go here. Wow. There's so many trees to crash into here. Oh, this is not going to be good for me. All right, let's go someplace over here where I can bring it down a little. Hopefully I don't lose reception. Can I come through any of these trees? No, let's go back. Slower, slower, slower. Let's get it going really slow here. Oh, come back to me. Come down this walkway. There's too many trees. Too many trees. There we are. Come this way. You can see me sitting over there. Right over here. Going this way over my camera. Go out to the water. There's the falls right in front of us. My God, we're going to go into the falls. Ah! <gasps> All right. Let's come on back. I'm going to switch batteries on this because this battery here is telling me it's running low on voltage. 
All right, time out, time out. I just want to tell you something. I was flying this quad and I hit a tree. And when I hit the tree, it killed the video. So I have no video to show you of it hitting a tree. However, I do have some footage from the camera I'm recording on now when I went to pick up the drone after hitting the tree. You see all the tree branches. <laughs> and I hit a tree dead on. You know, when you crash in the trees, it's good to crash into a branch, but <laughs> I crashed into this tree head on. Like I could not have hit it any more direct. Check it out right here. Look at the size of this tree too. It's not massively large. And here's our little guy down there. Well, it, it survived that crash. <sighs> All right, good thing it's freezing cold out here. None of the snow is melting on the electronics. So let's uh, brush it off. As far as I can tell, the camera lens looks perfectly fine. So that was kind of goofy on my part to smash into a tree, but I don't know this area. So after I hit the tree, this was full of snow. I wiped off the snow and I took it for another flight. And guess what? It flew for a little bit and then it shorted out. Yep, the snow started to melt because of the heat and I shorted the whole drone out. So how do you fix a drone that shorted out? Well, first, let me show you the crash from the short out. All right, we're going again, flying again. The camera's still working, I think, uh, as well as the recording system. Let's go down this pathway for a bit. See what we see. Not much there. And then come on back this way. There we are. <laughs> Flying much slower now. I do have a buzz in one of the props. You can hear it as I come over. I don't know if it's ice or what. I don't know. Sounds okay now. Not super loud. All right. And uh, let's quickly do that. Ah, I just crashed. That totally fell out of the sky as I was going down this way. Let's see, so I was flying along here. Oh, there we are there. Here it is down here. It's dead this time. Dead, 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 dead. Oh, I got a short or something. Hopefully I didn't destroy it. Well, I guess I'll find out when I get home. So you're back to me. How do you fix a drone that shorted out? Well, it's pretty simple. Since the video was still working and it was mostly just the short with the flight controller, all you do is you just let the snow melt, dry off, put it on a heating vent in your house if you have one, and the wind blowing over it will dry this out really nice, and then you can fly it again. So now I'm going to take it for a flight here. I'm back home. I've left the area. It's unfortunate because I had some really good shots of the waterfall. I went really close to it with this guy, but... It was all lost when I hit the tree. Anyways, I'm going to fly around my area here and uh, show you how good it is. Here we go. All right, before we get back to the outdoor flight footage, I just want to tell you the prop size are 2.2 inch gem fan props. The brushless motors are 1104 lava motors at 72,000 kV. The flight controller, I can't remember. So I'm going to put it on the screen someplace and that's the flight controller that's in this baby. It keeps this thing flying super, super smooth. All right, so let's jump back to the outdoor flight. All right, so I'm gonna lean on my wife's brand new car and I'm gonna take our little drone and I'm gonna stick it on my wife's brand new car. Hopefully she doesn't see this. Here we go. It's pretty quiet. This uh, quad flies extremely fast. So um, it's a joy to fly and it's not super loud. Now, one thing I wanna show you as you're looking at my area here, we had snow, as I've mentioned in this video, it's the month of April and we had this freak snowstorm. All the snow was pretty much gone and then it came back as well as the cold weather. So it's pretty cold out right now. Let's go up here and spin her around. There we go. And uh, keep on flying. This thing flies really well. As a matter of fact, it flies extremely fast. I think this is a, a ripper, a racer or something of that style because it's not a slow flying quad whatsoever. There, see this car down here? I can chase it. Well, actually, I'm going too fast. I'm going to overpass it, <laughs> overtake it. <laughs> coming on, slow down. Hey, you're going too slow, car. Let's see. Is he going to speed up? No, nope. there's people coming. I got to turn around. It's way too fast for many things. Let's come on back to me. But it is a lot of fun to fly, that's for sure. And you can see our beautiful neighborhood here. Nice slow loop there. Did I call it a loop? A flip? A roll? Yeah, a roll. I think that's the proper term. I get mixed up with the plane hobby, the helicopter hobby, and everything else. So you want to know how it flies. It flies beautiful. It's really, really well tuned. It's really good. Look at me. I'm just cruising everywhere. But it is very fast. I have to warn you of that. 
However, I am going to try flying it indoors and uh, hopefully I don't smash into any of the walls, but I think I'll be okay. I'm not really sure, but uh, let's get under this tree here and go on back. Also for flight time, uh, I'll have to show you what battery I used or I'll write it on the screen, but I think your flight time is about four minutes with such a battery when flying in manual acro mode. I'm getting a low battery warning now and I can barely see the voltage, but uh, yeah. At some point it's going to want to fall out of the sky. I'm just going to go slower and slower so I get more battery power back. But for now, let's bring it on back because I know how it flies. I did put a little landing pad out here, but here, let's come around me. I just want to see how slow I can fly this. So look at how slow I'm going now. I'm still in acro mode. You saw how fast it was going. Let's see if I can maneuver it right near my leg so it comes in the other camera. I'm going to try to graze myself right here. Oh yeah. There we go. As long as I miss the crotch area, we are happy. All right, there's my little landing pad over there. So let's come on back, stay out of the water, and slow it down. Coming to the landing pad. Now, when I was flying this outdoors, it does fly very fast, but I could slow it down. And because I could slow it down, I thought, well, I might as well try it indoors. I don't want to mark up the walls. It does have prop guards. So I did try it indoors and it flew quite well, although I did crash it once. Check this out. All right, time for the indoor flight. I'm going to plug this little guy in. Let me just plug the battery in here. There we are. Now the light comes on, uh, but it's going to go off in a second as soon as it connects to the radio. So I'm going to turn it back on. There we go. Lights on. I'm going to leave it on for the indoor flight because I have cameras on the floor that will spot this looking really cool with the light on. So here we go. Now to fly, I'm going to head that way. So I'm going to put it over on my table back here. You might be able to see it lit up back there. You know, stick it over here. Maybe you can see it better. And we're all set to go. There you go with the light on. It's right over there. I won't get as much flight time with the light on because that uses battery power, but still we'll see how it goes. Arm the motors and let's fly it indoors. Take it nice and slow. Coming through the hallway. Go through this little gate here. Whoa, it's got a lot of power. It's got a lot of power indoors. Yikes. I remember flying this outside about an hour ago and it had tons of power forward. You really have to control that throttle. So uh, yeah, don't, don't hit the throttle too much when you're sitting still. You're going to hit the ceiling in your house. There we are, going around. So you can fly it indoors. That's the whole purpose of this little flight here is to show you I can fly this indoors. Whoa, I hit... Where am I going? <laughs> what was that? See what I mean? <laughs> it's got way too much power. Let's plop that back down and carry on. And that was just from hitting the gate and bouncing backwards. That's something that doesn't happen too often. All right, let's see if the record still works. There we go. I got to slow down a little bit. Much too fast here. Let's go. So when you go through the gates, as I'm doing here, you have to make sure you don't hit the gate in any shape or form or else uh, it knocks this little guy flying in some weird fashion. All right. So you could probably fly with the light on indoors. Eh, you might get four minutes or three and a half minutes. I'm not really sure. So I'll put on screen how long I've been flying for. You could check it out. So. So I will say, if you have experience flying uh, whoops, you could fly this indoors. But if you're a beginner, you definitely can fly it indoors. It's got too much power. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to go around above the gates here. And while well, you've seen it outside, it flies very fast. So this is me just going around above the gates and uh, it's it moves. I'm trying to hold it back throttle wise or else I'm going to go flying right into a wall. But uh, it is fast. It's a fast little ripper. So well, you're going to have a lot of fun though. If you had a bigger house, my house is too small. Look at how fast I could just circle around here. <laughs> All right. Whoa, make sure I don't hit that thing. All right, let's come on down. And let's go a little slower. A little slower, a little slower. And we'll come down to the gate. There we are. I think I even touched it there. And we'll come down to a gate again. And I'll put on the screen how long I've been flying for so that you could see how long this flight has been. I chopped up the video so you don't have to watch the whole video. 
and I just put it so that you can see every now and then how long I've been flying. All right, I had my timer set for six minutes and it's already down past two minutes, so that means I'm hitting the four minute. All right, I'm gonna come and land it and I'll just plunk it in front of me. Coming over right in front, right over here, and <laughs> there we go. I certainly do land hard. Here we have the box the Pavo 20 Pro comes in. Everything but the camera system is in this box. You simply assemble the frame, then you attach the camera system. It's that easy. When complete, you'll have a Pavo 20 Pro with a DJI 04 Pro system. In the box, you'll also find a spare set of props, as well as the cable that goes from the DJI 04 Pro system into the flight controller, and a cable and a USB-C connector that allows you to attach the Pavo 20 to Betaflight configurator. You also receive an optional LED strip that plugs into the flight controller. You can then assign it to a switch on your radio to turn it on or off. And finally, you do receive a beta FPV support card. Now, if you already own the camera system and all the electronics, but you're missing the frame, well then Beta FPV has you covered. This inexpensive kit has everything you need except the electronics. This means you get the prop guards, but you don't get the motors. You get the carbon fiber frame, but you don't get the ESC, the flight controller, or the receiver. You also get the canopy for the DJI 04 Pro system, but you don't get the DJI 04 Pro system. And finally get all the screws, the rubber grommets, and the battery strap. And all of that comes in this very inexpensive kit. All right, so you're back to me and I'll give you my final thoughts. First final thought is it's very positive because it flies amazing. Second final thought is it's very positive again because if you build this, if you put your own camera in it, you're gonna feel like you built a kit, like you put this together so you know how everything works. And because of that, even though it was so simple, but because of that, you're gonna love this even more because when you fly it, you can tell people you built this. And the last positive thing to say is it flies very, very fast. It's very good at freestyle and you can also slow it down when in acro mode so all in all it's a very good quad oh and let me just reiterate it is under 250 grams so it's not only a good quad it's an awesome quad and the last thing to say is anybody watching this video right now who owns a pavo quad you don't have to own this one you could own any other pavo they make so many of them for so many camera systems you've probably had a really good experience because they're tuned so well so i don't have to really sell you on this one but for everybody else who wants to buy the kit and wants to buy the camera separately and stick them together and the batteries and everything i'll put links below go check out the links below and you'll find links to pretty much everything you need for this baby so this is the end of my video i've told you everything i need to tell you i believe here i'm going to light up my canada so it looks pretty cool canada at night this is the northern lights going over that is insane i'll stop talking if you have questions on this product post your questions below and i'll get back to you if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and i'll catch you in a future video with many more cool product reviews until then i say bye Thank you.